All right, everybody. So after almost two weeks of recording footage for this video, I finally have all my footage, and now the video is finally here. This is my My Summer Car Guide on on all the quote unquote side gigs in the game. So side gigs is what I refer to job to earn less than a thousand marks, like uh, delivering fish or strawberries or whatever, all that kind of stuff. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first side gig on today's list, and probably one of the easier jobs to do, is picking strawberries. It's pretty easy, but it's pretty boring, and it doesn't really pay a whole lot per strawberry box. Now obviously, if you want to take the entire strawberry field, it does make you quite a bit of money. But like I said, it's pretty boring, and it takes a long time. Strawberry picking is one of those jobs you can do when you have, it's a Sunday afternoon, you have no work to do, and you just want something to do to pass the time. Um, it does make sense though why nobody likes this job, because it takes a lot of patience. And that's probably why the 1,000 strawberries achievement is such a rare achievement on the Steam uh, achievement set. The strawberry field is located off the dirt road near the landfill. Once you get to the strawberry field, there will be a bunch of empty uh, crates next to the uh, I don't know what you call this guy, the field keeper or whatever. You want to pick up one of these, these uh, little baskets here and go to the bushes. Now there is a certain strat you can use to actually pick them a little faster rather than having to move your mouse. You only have to use one button. So you kind of have to like kind of finagle your, your head into the, into the bush so you can pick the strawberry and drop it at the same time without having to move uh, your head a little bit as I'm doing right here. And basically all you have to do is just keep spamming F. Eventually you will have to change to a different bush. Uh, a basket holds about four bushes worth of strawberries. And that's pretty much it. Now, there is a hidden attribute hidden to the player called Berry Picking Skill. You can also find it in the MSC editor as well. And basically it denotes how fast you can pick and how many strawberries you can pick from each bush. Now, I doubt anyone's ever spent the time to level up to the max amount for this berry picking skill. I might have at one point, I don't know, but yeah, I guess if you want to do that, that's, that's cool, I guess. Now, for taking this video, I only picked one box of berries, but if you want to actually pick like at least one row, it's at least a couple hundred, I think about 140 or 200 marks per row, if you want to do that. Uh, I kind of find it funny that the uh, guy who runs Strawberry Field basically admits to tax fraud um, by paying you under the table, which, uh, you know, that's, that's a great little touch there. The next job on the list is the advertising flyer job for Temo. Now, as you can see in my footage, I already picked up the advertising flyers off of his counter. You can get them as soon as it turns to Friday uh, in the game, and it's kind of a bit of a, it's a bit time sensitive too, so you want to get the job done, or at least pick up the flyers before Friday is over, or they will be spawned. So once you have the flyers, then basically all you have to do then is deliver all these flyers to every mailbox in the map. The first location is located near the church. There are five mailboxes here. You can pick up a flyer by pressing F when you hover your mouse over the uh, advert pile. Next location is in town, just up the street, uh, where the apartments are located. There are seven mailboxes located here. And then the last one in town is located just before the outskirts of the town, which is one of the uh, septic tank uh, customers or whatever, which is located right here. Next one is located actually at uh, Tembo's house. Apparently you can still deliver to his house and still get paid for it. I think it's kind of funny, um, but... You just go up here, and it's just right there on the side of the road. Next one is literally a stone's throw away, which is Tavaka's farm, and uh, that's pretty straightforward. If anyone is familiar with the uh, drivable ricochet mod, this this next mailbox is actually the house where you can buy the ricochet uh, in that mod. So there's that one. And then the last one is, oh, well, last one on this road anyway, is the venti shack. I find it funny that even after you actually get the Venti uh, dealer's house, you can still deliver uh, flyers to it for some reason, so that's cool, I guess. Once you arrived at Fleetari's repair shop, there are four mailboxes adjacent or across the street from his repair shop. And then there is one we deliver at the Juco's house, one at the Firewood guy's house, and then one at the end of the road here by one of the septic tank guys. 
After that, you want to drive back towards your house and you can put one in your uncle's mailbox right next to yours. You can't put one in your own mailbox, which I guess makes sense if you're the one delivering them, so. After that, drop one off over at grandma's house. And then the last two are located just before the uh, highway exit uh, near the starting line, or I guess the one of the, the end of the rally, as you can see here. I also, they also seem to give you two extra um, flyers. I always thought maybe I always missed a mailbox somewhere, but I think they gave you two extra ones in case for some reason, like, you accidentally, uh, you know, push one through the, uh, the, the, the ground and it falls through the, the, uh, the world. So I guess that's a good, good thing to have. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do for the flyer job. And all you have to do now is collect your payments. Once you've arrived back at the shop, you can go and collect your payment. The payment should be have a little envelope on the counter where the flyers used to be. You will get about 700 marks and good praises from Temmo. Okay, so the next job is delivering uh, fish and groceries to grandma. Now, I'm only going to be covering the fish portion because I wasn't able to um, get the job where I deliver her like groceries. But it, honestly, the groceries part is probably the easier uh, version of this job than the fish one. And it's pretty straightforward. I'll, I'll explain it later. Now, typically what I do is, uh, I, I, if you follow my guide so far, you know I leave the uh, fish trap at the island because it gets you the most fish the most, the fastest way. And typically, be, uh, I will start a fire going before I go to sleep. So, I think it's around like 3 p.m. right now in this, in this footage I'm recording, where I recorded. So, basically what you do is you let the fire go down to like coals and then you go to sleep. And then in the morning, you cook the fish and you head back to the mainland to deliver the fish. Now, you don't have to use the fireplace. You could use the charcoal fire pit or you could take the raw fish back to the mainland and go cook it on the stove, which would be a little bit faster. But that's just the kind of the way I have done it. And as you can see, we have more than enough fish to uh, use. Now, you can either do one of two things. You can either deliver her 10 raw fish, which will give you a thousand marks, or five cooked fish, which will give you the same amount. Uh, you, you can't, even if you try to deliver her 10 cooked fish, you will still only get 1,000 marks. 1,000 marks is the maximum amount you can get from either delivering fish or delivering groceries. Um, so that's kind of why I put this in the side gigs category. Once the fire has burned down the coals, you can place the raw fish on top of the, uh, the coals. Obviously, if you try to do it with open flames, it will just burn them, and I don't think you'll get any money for uh, for burnt fish from grandma. And then all you have to do at that point is basically just uh, wait for them to cook. After they finish cooking, you can head back to the mainland with your cooked fish. Now, there is one thing you have to remember when visiting grandma. Grandma will absolutely not spawn on Sundays because she wants to go to church and she will not spawn if it's cloudy in her area or rainy. Now if there's a clear spot and you're able to get grandma to spawn before cloud cover or rain starts, she will not be spawned. She will stay there just blabbering away to you in the rain or whatever. Um, so just keep that in mind, make sure the sky was clear. When I recorded this footage, I was a bit skeptical whether or not there was clear skies above Grandma's house, but uh, luckily, uh, there was no problem with that. After you have arrived at Grandma's house with the fish, all you have to do is simply put the fish in the little basket on her, her uh, table, uh, take a seat in the chair, and take a sip of coffee to like start the conversation with her, and she'll just start blathering away about all kinds of things. Like you can. You can read the transcript on the wiki page. I won't. I won't go over it in this video. And honestly, at that point, if you wanted to put on the YouTube video, go ahead. Uh, go ahead and, and do that because she could be blattering on for five to ten or even fifteen minutes. So I'd say at that point, just go make a cup of coffee or something. The good part about this job is she gets you free coffee though, which uh, 
will help lower your stress and fatigue. But if you have prison tattoos, she will no longer give you coffee. After waiting about an eternity of her blathering about the same shit for about 10 minutes, you can finally collect your money. And that's pretty much it. And now as far as the grocery delivery, uh, she will give you a call asking for sugar, sausage, and milk. Now obviously, I'm hoarding all my sugar for my Killju brewing, so she ain't getting none of that. But, so you can still offer her sausage and milk. Now, the amount of sausages and milk you can buy from the store does not equate to a thousand marks. So if you want to start like hoarding sausages or hoarding milk for whenever she calls you, I guess you could do that. Uh, personally, I just buy whatever Temo has in the shop and just roll with that because usually she will pay way, pay, pay more than what I spent on the item in the store anyway. Okay, so the last and final job wow. on the list is driving wow. Juco home. And I will say, this is probably one of the more lucrative that's side that's gigs you can do suit. because if you can manage to get a call from Juco every day, you can make quite a bit of money doing this. Now, Juco will call you usually around 2 a.m. He'll probably wake you up in the middle of the night from sleeping. Basically saying, hey, I tried to call everybody, nobody called, nobody answered, can you pick me up from the pub? And uh, that's pretty much it. Now, it used to be when you drove Juco home, he would only give you like a measly 50 mark, which is like barely enough money for gas. But now, he pays you based on your speed. So basically how you get paid is, um, Juco has 3,000 marks starting out as soon as he gets in the car. So as soon as he opens the door to get in the car, he has 3,000 marks to give you. But these, this, this dollar amount or this, this uh, mark amount decreases by 10 marks every one second. And the minimum amount he can pay you if you're uh, super late is like 50 marks, which is like, he'll, it won't go any lower than that, he'll pay you 50 marks. So, basically, the faster you drive or the faster you get him home, the more money you can make. And usually, typically, I make between 500 to 700 marks uh, a delivery. Once he gets to your car, he will start talking to you about some stuff, like maybe his wife, something like that. And his story will change over the course of five nights. So, for example, this night he's talking about how, oh, his wife calls him a drunk. Now, this is a rough translation from the in-game subtitles. If you want a full, like, true translation, you can go on the wiki page and look them up yourself. You can drive him home in either the van, the Rusco, the... Ferndale or the Sassima, and I actually drove him home in all those vehicles over the course of the five nights I drove him home. Once you arrive at his house, you basically kind of like drop him off right near the picket fence here, and he will say, hey, thanks for giving me a ride home, and he will give you some money. And in this circumstance, I was able to get about 700 marks. So like I said, it's a pretty lucrative uh, side gig if you're able to do it almost every day. On the second night of driving him home, uh, Juco will exclaim that he hates the train and how it, oh it's, it 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 blows the wizard list to piss me off and and I hate it and all that stuff and also you'll probably see in this video I also took a different way home I thought taking the dirt road would be faster um, but they weren't which is clearly evident by how much money I received on this night as opposed to the previous night on the third night I decided to give Juco a ride home in the Rusco now listen I wouldn't recommend this because it's just you wouldn't make as much money and there's a possibility you can crash and if you crash one of the new updates now is if you crash with somebody in the car like uh juko or suski or grandma you not only will you die but the passenger will die as well permanently so you want to not do that but luckily i made it home okay or made it to his house okay with the rusco obviously i made a lot less money with the car because i didn't I wasn't driving as fast. On the third night, uh, Juko exclaims that his wife might be leaving him to go live with some Swedish Finn or something like that. I don't really know the whole context or the uh, translation, but it sounds to me like his marriage is falling apart. Obviously, this night I earned substantially less money because I drove a lot slower because I didn't want to overheat the Rusco. But nevertheless, I earned money anyway. On the fourth night, I decided to give him a ride home on the Ferndale, which in retrospect was probably a worse idea than driving a home on the Rusco, as I'll show you in a bit. I think uh, Juco was too scared to ride in the Ferndale because for some reason he was just having a hard time getting in the car, but eventually he did. 
On the fourth night, he expresses his uh, continued hatred towards the train and how he's like, yeah, I just want to go on those train tracks, just run me over, do it, kill me, you know, and uh, I feel for him. He, he's, he's a broken man. The reason why I didn't get paid for this one was I uh, flipped the Ferndale, as you can see here, and completely missed his house. But at least he got out of the car anyway, safe and sound. Somehow. I, I don't know. The fifth night was recorded on one of my streams, which is why you can see my face here. And I picked him up in the Satsuma. This was the day he tells me that he is actually secretly a millionaire. I'm a millionaire, young blood laddie. I'm a millionaire, but don't take my money. It turns out his wife had bought a lottery ticket, but she didn't cash it, so he went to go check the numbers. And he had won. But obviously he didn't want his wife to know about it because she would have left him. So he grabbed all the money and put it in a briefcase and hid it somewhere so his wife would never find it. All the while acting like some dumb drunkard to kind of fool his wife and staying with him. Honestly though, bro, the money you had, you could have bought yourself a better wife, but go off, I guess, man, whatever. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now, at this point, you can actually go and find his briefcase and take all his money. But that's for a separate video. After the fifth night, you will receive a call from Juko asking you to move him out of his house because his wife finally left him and he wants to go move to a moth apartment over in the city. That means, though, if you move him out of the house, you will no longer be able to get money from him from driving him home. Now, even if you choose not to move him out, he will still call you every almost every night uh, asking for a ride home. So if you choose not to do the moving job, it's still a lucrative side gig. Thanks for the money, dummy. Now get the hell, get the hell out of here. And that pretty much covers driving Juco home. And this that is the last of the side gigs you can do in this game. And like I said, you can continue to do this side gig as long as you want, as long as you don't move Juco out of the house. So that's pretty much it. And that concludes episode eight of my My Summer Car Guide. This took way too long to make. I think the longest part was just having to drive Juco home. You could have had to wait until the evening to do it. Most of the other jobs you can do pretty much any time of the day, I think, with maybe the exception of, like, Grandma. I didn't really go over the hours of service or hours of operation each, each thing. Like, Grandma, I think, is only awake from, like, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The f Strawberry Guy is almost from, like, I think 6 to, like, 10, I think? I can't remember. And I don't think most people do the strawberry picking job unless they want to get achievement, which... Okay, understandable, I suppose. That's pretty much it for this episode. I'm so glad I'm done with it. Next one should be out a lot quicker than the last one. Um, so I will see you guys in the next episode. And hopefully on the stream very, very soon. Until next time, guys. Have a good night. And have a great weekend.